Subscribe to The Honest Critique for current affairs, movie, book, and product reviews. Also, make sure you press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. The views, information, or opinions expressed during the video series are solely those of the individuals and do not necessarily represent those of The Honest Critique and its employees. The following video contains strong language which may be offensive to some viewers. Viewer discretion advised. Hello and a very warm welcome. I'm delighted and honored to be joined by Rabbi Liodi, who lost his wife and daughters to Hamas terrorists while they were traveling in a car earlier this year. So, sir, thank you so much for taking your time and speaking to us. I want to start by uh, asking you to tell a audience uh, about uh, your experience on the October 7th and what happened with you actually uh, on that uh, fateful day if you could just tell us okay uh, just a little introduction about myself um, my family was going up north six months ago the 7th of April and uh, in two cars my wife and my two daughters were attacked by Palestinian Hamas terrorists on the way up to our holiday and were shot dead at short range. So we were very early uh, targets of uh, Hamas. Um, on the 7th of October, um, I was in synagogue with uh, a lot of my friends. Uh, it was in the morning. Uh, I live in a frat, which is south of Jerusalem, and probably 100 kilometers away from Gaza. And um, uh, we just finished reading from uh, uh, the Torah, which is the uh, the, the five books of Moses. And uh, then the siren went off and everybody had to run into the uh, air shelter. Uh, men, women and children, elderly, babies, everybody sort of a little bit panicked. Um, we have one minute and a half uh, to get into. Uh, once the siren goes off, we have one minute and a half. Um, and if you could tell us, actually, um, your personal tragedy happened way before the October 7th, right? It happened six months before. Um, mm -hmm. So um, was that around the same area or uh, it was uh, a little up uh, the uh, Israel, actually? Yeah, no. So we, this what happened to me happened um, on the way between Jericho and the, and, uh, the Sea of Galilee. So it's the other side of the country completely uh, to Gaza and yeah, probably you know, one of the furthest points away from Gaza. Um, so these were terrorists who came from Nablus, um, which is in the West Bank. Yeah. Oh, uh, and uh, on October 7th, so where were you actually in that part? In which part of uh, Israel were you? I was, I, I live in Efrat, which is south of Jerusalem. So it's also about 100 kilometers away from Gaza. Um, and um, so we ran into the air, air shelters. And uh, when you're in the air shelter, you then hear, we heard five explosions, very loud. Um, and when we came out, we saw in the sky uh, five uh, clouds uh, of where, where the um, Iron Dome, which is Israel's system to, to shoot down the missiles, had activated and had shot down the missiles right above our heads. So, and uh, I have a couple of last questions actually, and one of them I wanted to ask you is, uh, the nation actually, uh, the, the state of Israel is going through a really tough time uh, at this point of, uh, when we look at what happened on October 7th, uh, preceding as well as uh, the days after that, well, a lot of people are discovering their loved ones actually, they've been taken hostage or been uh, butchered actually, literally by the Hamas terrorist. Uh, How's how's everything around you? I'm sure that a lot of people who visit your synagogue, uh, even is in Jerusalem, but might know someone who has lost a loved one or uh, a family been kidnapped. Yes, I, I know people personally who were killed. We um, in my synagogue, uh, one of uh, the sons was killed on the day of the attack. He was in the army, and he was uh, trying to attack the terrorists. And so we had a funeral. Uh, about a week ago and um then another friend of mine has two sons uh one of them got married last week another one of them was in captivity in uh, gaza so they were thinking about whether to cancel the funeral uh, to cancel the wedding but uh, they decided to go ahead with it anyway so it was you know you can imagine how difficult it was to celebrate a wedding while you've got uh, one of your sons 
uh, as a hostage in in Gaza. Um, so it, it, this is a national tragedy. Everybody knows people who have been killed, who have been raped, who have been uh, abducted, uh, who have had kids who have been murdered. Um, it's um, I, th I think w w why it's significant uh, for India is, as you say, that uh, what what happens in Israel, uh, we're the front line against terror in the world. Uh, we literally are here on the on the battle front, and whatever happens here is coming, you know, to every country in Europe and in uh, in, in India and around the world, America, um, and therefore, if we're able to, you know, when we are able to defeat this enemy. I think this will be a turning point for terror across the whole world because I think Israel will be able to define um, the, uh, you know, the the way to combat this evil, um, and this is really what it is. It's a battle between good and evil. Um, you know, there's a clear distinction here between uh, Israel that uh, is defending its right to exist as a state, uh, as a free democratic state, the only free and democratic state in uh, the Middle East. And uh, these uh, states like Gaza, West Bank, uh, Syria, Iran, that have no human rights and abuse their own citizens uh, and have no democracy. And uh, that's the battle that's taking place at the moment. And uh, just one, one interesting fact that, you know, there are 200 million uh, Muslims in the area, the Middle East. Uh, there are only 1.7 million who live in free democratic country. And those are the Israeli Arab citizens. So we have 1.7 million uh, Muslim Israeli Arab citizens who have passports, Israeli passports. They have all the rights of every Jew in Israel. They go to, they have free schools, free um, uh, hospitals. Uh, some of them serve in the army, in the uh, parliament. And they're the only free and democratic Muslims in the Arab world, which is strange because they're under Israeli Jewish government. So uh, it just gives you a big picture of the reality here that uh, Israel is this democratic, tolerant uh, uh, state surrounded by racist, genocidal uh, countries that want to kill us and throw us into the sea. The last thing that I wanted to ask you is for our audience who might not know, and I've introduced you, I'll of course do the introduction later, uh, but, but you're also a rabbi, actually, at a synagogue. And I wanted to ask you about a lot of people are going through a really hard time way back your, in your home as well. And a lot of people here, not just uh, in India, but around the world, when they look at these visuals. And it's and it's very disturbing to look how some of these uh, terrorists who came from Gaza actually carried out this brutality. Uh, what are you telling uh people who are visiting your synagogue to how they should get uh, through this tough time? Um, I am telling them um, that, strangely, that um, the way to deal with tragedy is to act. Um, if you sit and look at videos and discuss it and argue whether it's right, it's wrong, and whether you know it should have happened, it shouldn't have happened, and who caused it, and you know, that's very unhealthy. But if you say it's happened, and now how are we going to respond to it? That That's a much healthier response, um, a much healthier way of dealing with it. So people in Israel are getting extremely active. They are packing boxes of food and clothes for soldiers. We've got, you know, 350, 400,000 soldiers now on the front. Those are volunteers, you know, they're, they're reservists um, and they don't have all their equipment. So it's been provided by everybody in this country. Uh, people are raising money for charities. Um, and uh, they're also creating a lot of social media uh, posts as well to explain what's going on here. So people are active in, in every possible way, helping the war effort. And, uh, you know, one of the things that Hamas said was they attacked us because before the attack, Israel looked like it was very uh, fragmented. There were marches through the streets and people were arguing on the left and on the right. But the moment this happened, the whole uh, Israeli public uh, came together. They're completely united. Everybody knows exactly what the task is, which is to destroy Hamas. Uh, and now you have left-wingers and right-wingers fighting together in the same army units uh, and prepared to die for one another. Uh, even though two weeks ago, you know, they were fighting with each other, you know, uh, fist, fist to fist. But uh, so so that that's the uh, Israeli people. That's the Jewish people. Uh, we will prevail. It's our only country. It's our only place that we can live. It's a tiny country. Uh, as you know, it's it's you know it, it's a fraction 
uh, of the size of any of our Arab neighbors. Uh, there are 53 Arab nations. There's only one Jewish nation and we have nowhere else to go. So uh, we will be fighting here and we will win this. And when we win it, we'll win it for ourselves, but also for uh, the whole uh, world uh, uh, democracy and free countries in the world. who will be able to see that uh, you know, there's no need to, to uh, tolerate uh, terrorism, but you have to stand up and fight it. So, so uh, I mean, thank you so much, actually, for taking your time and speaking to us. And I'm sure this message will go out to a lot of our viewers who are watching this program. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank Bye -bye. you. Sir. Have a great day, sir.